print. I'm Shikha and I'm here with you to share a series on Java tutorial for beginners. So there have been many of you who have requested us to do a series for beginners. Now, if you are new to coding, you haven't heard of any programming language or haven't written a piece of code before, or you're moving from one language to another. Let's say you have learned C in your school or college, and now you want to learn Java, or you have learned Python somewhere, and now you want to move on to Java. This series is going to be a very easy hands-on for you to just go through it, practice by the side and getting to know Java a lot more easier and a lot more fun way. There are no prerequisites for this. You don't have to know coding or you don't have to be a computer science graduate or something. Just have to have a system, a desktop or a laptop, whatever is handy with you and go ahead with every video that you watch in this series, just practice whatever is being taught and try to do more of hands-on. Theoretically, you can grab any of the books out there to understand the definitions if you have to, but practically, if you actually want to code, the series is made for you. Since the series is for beginners, we are going to touch the very, very basic details for any starters into this programming language. So starting off with how to download and set up your machine to make it friendly for Java development to what are variables or data types, arrays, loops, if statements, and moving on further to the topics that we all dread like threads or exceptions. So I hope you have fun with me learning Java in the series. And if you have any doubts or any queries at any point of time, just feel free to drop a comment below so that we get back to you and help you in your learning process. So starting off in this very first video, I would like to start with installing JDK and Eclipse. So this is your basic two things that you need in your system, in your machine to start off practicing Java. So in this very first video, we'll start off with learning how to set up our machine to write Java programs. So that is installing JDK and installing an editor that is Eclipse. Now let me just give you a little background and then we'll go step by step into how we download both JDK and Eclipse and get that working. So first off, JDK is the Java development toolkit. Now this consists of JRE, that is the runtime environment, Java runtime environment, in addition with some tools and libraries that help you write your Java code. So everything that you need to execute your Java program comes packaged all together in this JDK. So once you download JDK and it is up and functioning on your system, you can go ahead, install any editor, write your program, and just execute it. So this is that is why you need JDK. Now JRE consists of two things, the Java virtual machine and the core libraries such as input output, collections, networks, etc. Don't bother about any of these terminologies right now because you'll get to know these better as we progress during the course of this series. Now JDK also comes with two very important .exe files, the java.c.exe and the java.exe. Now what are these both doing here? java.c.exe converts your program to bytecode. This is basically your compiler. And the java.exe that you get in the JDK executes your bytecode and finally runs it. So these two are what compile and run your program and they are also the part of our JDK. Now while we are at the topic of compiling and executing our program, let me just step back a little and tell you that Java is a very high level language which you might have already heard. Now what is the difference between a high level language and a low level language? If I put it in very simple terms, a low level language 
a low level language is what computer understands easily. But it becomes very difficult for a coder or a programmer to write code in a low level language. Now a high level language is designed for the ease of access or use of a coder. So it becomes very simple for a coder, a programmer to type code in a high level language, but then it needs to be compiled and interpreted to convert it into a language that our machine would understand better. All right. So there are two ways to translate any high level language into a language that the computer can understand. Either you use an interpreter or you use a compiler. Now, what is the difference between these two terms, interpreter and compiler? An interpreter converts your code line by line to the language that is understandable by the computer. So one line, execute it, move on to the next line, execute it. While a compiler, what it does, it takes your whole program, how many ever lines are there, and in one go, just compiles it and makes it into a code an executable code that is understandable by your machine. So let's say if you have a Java program, whatever lines of code you have in your program, that is called your source code. Now that source code, once it moves to the compiler, it is converted into the executable code. This executable code, particularly for Java, is called as bytecode. Now this bytecode is what is run by an interpreter. So might have heard that Java is platform independent. This is basically the reason why Java is platform independent because the byte code can then move on to any machine and just it needs the interpreter that would give you the desired output. All right. So coming back to our JDK. So we have two executables. Now you know the compiler. Why is it there? And why do we have the java.exe that helps run our programs? Now, moving further, now if you go ahead and search for installing JDK, you will see several versions, standard edition, enterprise edition, micro edition. Now all these serve different purposes, but for a basic desktop application or program, what we are going to do here, what we need is Java SE development kit, in short called the JDK. So let me just tell you that enterprise edition and micro edition are more high level. So for example, enterprise edition is for community driven work, whereas micro edition provides a robust and flexible environment for embedded system programming. So, but right now, since we are sticking to our desktop applications, we'll just go ahead and learn the basics of Java with standard edition. Now this is the JDK download link here. You can simply uh, Google install JDK for your machine and you'll land on this oracle.com page. All right. So you see here SE, EE, ME, all the Java related downloads are available right here. Okay. So I'll leave the link down below in the description box also for you to go ahead. Now what you see here is development kit eight downloads. What you have to do is click on accept license agreements and whatever your system is, if it is Windows X64, 86, if it is a Linux machine, if it is a Mac OS, whatever your machine is, just go in front of it and click on this link to download. This will give you a zip file to download. If you're confused about which of these Linux machines is your machine or which of the Windows download you have to do, just go to your computer, right click properties and you'll see what your operating system is. So since my OS is 64 bit, I have downloaded this x64 Windows package download. Now this is going to give you a zip file. You just extract the files out of there and run the executable file in there. Now since I have already done it, I'm not doing it again, but I have a few slides to show you how it will look. So this is what when you run the .exe, you get this slide. This will give you a path where your files will be installed to. Program files, Java, JDK folder. You can make a note of it 
or we, I'll show you how to later find it out and you just click next it will complete the download process and once it is done you just hit close and there it is you are done installed GDK now let me show you how you check it so you go to your drive where you install the JDK program files Java JDK 1.8 right don't go to JRE folders just go to the JDK latest version if you already have a version you will have two folders here so go to the latest version that you have downloaded 1.8 click on it go to bin now inside this you will see multiple applications just right click on any application and go to properties you get this path here right C program files, Java, JDK, and bin. Just copy this path. Now this path, this bin path is what you need to set as your system path so that your system knows if a Java program is run, it has to look in for things here. So how do we do that? Again, we go to computer properties, go to advanced system settings, and environment variables. Now in here, all you have to do is create a new variable. Okay, so just say path. And for the variable value, you give the location that we just copied in from there. So this, that now your machine knows where to look for any Java related stuff. Just press OK. And we are done. Now, how do we check if JDK is successfully installed on our machines or not? We go to command prompt and just type Java. If you get all these details about Java, that means your Java is successfully installed. If you get an error here, that means there is something missing in your installed package and you might have to just delete it off and reinstall it again. Okay. So this being done with Java, let's move back. Setting up environment variables. This is what we just did by adding the variable name path. So you go to my computer, system properties, advanced system settings, system variables and path edit add JDK path I'll just go there once again right click properties advanced system settings environment variables and we just created a variable named path also what works sometimes is you go to system variables and you see here this path right now this path already would have multiple things in there so along with that you can insert your path that we copied here also but what I would recommend is you just create a new variable by the name path now moving back so now our JDK is installed our background everything is ready what we need now is a nice editor where we can type in our program and run it so for this many people use simple tools like notepad notepad plus plus many people just go ahead and write their programs on vim editors but when you're actually going ahead for a company you need to know to work on a nice editor and eclipse by far is the most highly used editor for java so we are going to use the same eclipse tool to write our programs and i'll explain to you why we have used eclipse ide to do that so for this also you don't have to do much just type eclipse download i'll leave the link for download down below in the description box so you can just go ahead and click on it and you will see this page pop up wherein you'll see all the different platforms for which eclipse is available so there's windows 32 bit 64 bit there's mac os there's linux 32 and 64 bit so again whatever your machine is just pick it and click on the download link so since I've already done it, I'm not doing it again. So mine, as you saw, it was a 64-bit machine. Clicked on the 64-bit machine. And again, you'll get a zip download. Just extract the files and run the executable. So what you will finally get is this folder. 
in your downloads you will get this folder once you extract just go inside and you see this eclipse application okay just click on it so it will launch your eclipse ide now ide is an integrated development environment why do we call it as an integrated development environment is because you can write your programs you can format your programs you can do many things very easily with your programs in an ide and most importantly you don't have to step out of your editing tool to compile your program or to run your program compilation and running of program also actually happens from inside the ide itself that is why it is very essential if you are going to prepare for an interview or if you want to go into it it is essential that you know one particular ide tool to work with so as you see when you click you get a workspace to be selected so you can choose whatever default workspace comes or you can browse here and change the location so this workspace is essentially a folder created in your drive wherein all your programs will be stored all right so use this as default if you are okay with it and just click okay this is going and you finally get a screen that looks like this wherein you have a package explorer window you have some console windows at the bottom and you have a big blank editor window you might get some additional windows if you are not into java perspective which i'll tell you how to do a bit later so ideally you will get a screen like this so once you give your workspace name you will get a screen like this wherein you will see a welcome screen which has overview which has some sample programs tutorials and what's new now you can go ahead and take a tour of your eclipse try to understand it better or if not you can simply click on this close icon and let the screen pop up which would look something like what my screen is looking right now okay now we'll understand eclipse a little better in our future videos but as of now this is your so when you're opening your eclipse for the first time when you close your welcome screen you'll get a screen that looks like this you'll have some window here you'll have a marker window down here you'll have a welcome tab on the right you'll have project explorer and a big white screen at the center which is the editor screen now we'll explore eclipse a bit more in detail in our upcoming videos but for now you have your jdk setup and ready and you have your editor setup and ready and we are going to meet soon but for now you have your jdk ready and you have your editor ready so we are all set to practice java in our upcoming videos once again please feel free to drop any of your doubts in the comments below i'll make sure i'll take them up in the upcoming videos and stay tuned for more fun coming up your way in this java series for beginners Happy coding!